reptiles are cold-blooded, which means that their body temperature changes with their surroundings. Reptiles need warmth in order to be active, but can be in danger of overheating as well. Reptiles adjust their body temperature by moving in and out of shade. Once their body temperature has reached its normal activity range, the reptile darts about in search of food. A sand lizard dances in order to keep his feet from burning on the hot desert floor. This sand viper has learned to use the hot desert sand to his advantage. Whether taking cover from a sandstorm or an aerial predator, the viper descends into the ground vertically, shuffling and rocking its body. As it goes down, it shovels sand upwards and over its back. The scales along the snake help to work the grains of sand along its body and soon only its eyes are visible to a cautious onlooker. The leopard tortoise is another reptile that is well suited to desert conditions. In addition to being able to withstand ground temperatures of up to 60 degrees Celsius, a tortoise can survive for more than a year without access to water. Desert tortoises have specially adapted limbs and claws that enable them to burrow into the hard desert soil. Push-ups? No, this dark lizard is actually thermoregulating by allowing air to cool the underside of its body and thus minimizing heat intake. Lizards and snakes are generally better at conserving water than mammals and other reptiles. But as the midday heat rises, snakes run the risk of overheating and reaching a critical temperature at which they cannot successfully function. This horned adder must move into the shade in order to bring its body temperature down. In a desert, death to one often means life to others, even if just to provide shade. All living creatures are considered prey, and this communal weaver nest is no exception. An egg has fallen from a nest, and another successful desert dweller has spotted it. This egg eater has been patiently waiting for this moment and wastes no time pouncing. He's still young and this egg presents quite a challenge. Its highly elastic jaws are lined with sticky ridges with which to grip the egg that is twice the size of the snake's mouth. eater now uses its tooth-like spines on the inside of its neck to saw the egg open. Flexing his neck back and forward, the sharp spine is used like a saw, cutting the egg in half. Finally, the shell is punctured, and the valve at the entrance to the stomach accepts yolk and liquid, but rejects the shell. Which he unceremoniously tosses out, and like all reptiles surviving the harsh desert conditions, wins him another day.